Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Stacy, and I'm here with Chris from Survivor Millennials versus Gen X. Hey, nice, nice to talk to you guys. Thanks for speaking with me today, Chris. How were you chosen to be on Survivor? Well, I just uh, applied and, and went through the process, and obviously, I guess they finally found something interesting about me. I've applied a million times, it seems, and went on a bunch of casting calls and things, but yeah, I guess they found something interesting this time. I guess it took 37 years to figure it out. What did you do differently that last time? Well, I, I did. I did. Uh, part of my video was to eat a piece of dog crap and uh, oh, on camera. Uh, <laughs> so that that had to have caught somebody's attention, I think. Hmm. Okay. So we saw in your Ponderosa video you ended up losing like thirty three pounds. How did you prepare for that? You know, I, I didn't. I, honestly, that was a shocker to me. I, I when we when I was getting weighed in, I you know I thought maybe ten, fifteen pounds, but I, you know I just didn't realize thirty three. I hadn't weighed two hundred nineteen, you know, point eight pounds in years. Uh, that was just a, it was actually a shocker to me that I lost that much weight. How did you prepare before going out? Well, you know, I the, you know I got about a good month of, of preparation, and I ate like a pig, man. I ate like hamburgers. People around my office were like, "What are you doing? Like you're eating cheeseburgers every day?" I was like, "Ah, you know, just just a uh, you know lazy right now." So I did pack on like a, a some extra weight, but man, I couldn't believe I lost that much. So you led your tribe in a lot of the challenges, but we noticed you were wearing a bandage on your shoulder for a long time. What happened? I had, I had a Superman tattoo that wasn't allowed to be shown on uh, camera. Oh, so it wasn't an injury. Okay. No, it wasn't an injury. It was just a Superman tattoo that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, legal reason, I couldn't show. <laughs> Did you have any injuries while you were out there? Yeah, you know, I was, uh, you know, well, I wouldn't know if they call them injuries. I would just say, you know, everybody gets, I don't know if they're bug bites or what, but I had a lot of infection um, out there and stuff. And it's, it, you know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, you get these big giant sores and I, it's just like every Survivor uh, season you've seen. Everybody gets bit by something. You don't even know what it is. But uh, so that, I wouldn't call it an injury. But I did certainly had some problems with that kind of stuff. How did you feel about Adam having that reward advantage in the game? You know, at the time, uh, I was neither here nor there. We we talked about it openly with Adam about the pros and cons behind it and. You know, my take on it, what I told him was it's just, you know, it's kind of a curse. You better just watch out because you could really turn somebody against you for stealing their, you know, their cupcake or their family visit or their hamburger, you know. Mm -hmm. Did he share the full details with you? Yeah, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I think he did. I mean, with the whole group after the Taylor vote, he came back and told us the whole, uh, everything about it. Um, So I'm pretty sure he, he came clean with the whole thing and said, you know, here's here's what it is, and so we all knew about it, and just kind of talked it through with him, saying, you know, you better be careful with that. Did you come up with some strategies for how to maximize it, given that he could decide who got to go with him once he stole it? Well, it wasn't even more. It wasn't more of that. It was more just. I think everybody was kind of giving him a passive aggressive threat, like you best not steal my stuff, <laughs> or you best not steal my family visit. Or you're going home. And I think it was more of a, a lot of passive aggressive, like, "Hey, man, you better watch out." Got it. And did you know anything about the idol he was holding? I did not. I did not know Adam had an idol at all. Why was it important to go after Jess if, at that exact point in the game? And why wasn't Jay your primary target, given you knew he had an idol? Well, you know, Jay. Jay was an interesting. Uh, let's, let me handle it first. The Jess part of it. Jess, we've, I felt like if I could take her out, it eliminated Dave's kind of two-way go. He could have went with us or with Jess and Ken. Uh, and you also have Adam who's clinging to Jess. So if we eliminate her, Dave's got to go with us, which means Ken's kind of got to do whatever Dave says. And then Adam is kind of a free agent. So we felt like eliminating her was very important to kind of ruin that side of things. That that alliance would be gone. They'd just all be kind of free agents and would have to cling to somebody, and we, we figured it would be us. Um, Jay was a, was a threat, and he would have been gone after very soon, but we just couldn't. I couldn't imagine him not playing his idol on my vote out. I mean, it was, that's a shocker. I, I can't imagine him not feeling threatened enough to play it, but, you know, he did a good job of holding on to it. So... Jay's definitely a threat, but we just feel, figured right then it was the time to see if we could get Jess out. Did you make any active ploys? Were there some things said at Tribal Council so that we didn't get to see to try to flush the idol? Maybe not. I, I don't know necessarily about at Tribal Council, but definitely before Tribal Council, it was 
I felt like made pretty clear to Jay that everybody was kind of not talking to him and not not really giving him any advice and it was hinted to him that either play the idol or go home and uh, I don't know if he got wind of something else or just maybe he I think honestly what he felt was is that my crew including Zeke and Hannah who ended up flipping on me had enough to vote Jess out and so he felt pretty comfortable hey, I'm not going to play it because we've got the majority here. Why should I play it at this point? Mm-hmm. Was there anything you wish had been shown about you that we didn't get to see? You know, I, you know, you always want more and more airtime when you're on a show like this, for sure. But, you know, I think they gave a pretty good – I got a pretty good – I can't complain about my edit. I mean, I, I got on a lot, and I got to talk a lot at Tribal. So I really wouldn't want to say I, I was – I was happy with it. I mean, there's a lot of people that weren't even seen on the on the show for a while, mm-hmm. didn't speak at all, right. and uh, so I can't complain about my edit. I'm sure there's lots of things I'd rather them show me and Brett a lot more, um, show that relationship. I would like them to show Dave and I's relationship a lot more because we had a lot more relationship than it than it showed. Hmm. Okay, so who would you like to see win, and what criteria will you use to decide who gets your final vote? Well, you know, uh, you know, the easy answer would be, you know, I would love Brett to win the show, but uh, Survivor's a big, for me is bigger than that. I feel when I went out of the game right now, Dave's the best player playing the game. He's made great moves. He's put himself in ways in which he has outs either way. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, right now, after Chris has voted out, and of course we've seen the Jess uh, Rocks drawing, Dave's playing the best game, and. For me, the criteria is who played the best game, not who I like or who I feel sorry for or any of that. Dave socially is playing a great game. Dave strategically is far and ahead of everybody. Now, uh, whether that comes true or not, you'll have to wait and see. Let's talk about the Rocks. As a fan, what was it like for you to be on the jury there with your first experience being that crazy tribal council? Well, it was it was great, actually. I mean, who, what better way to, you know, be at least if you're on a jury in, in Survivor to be able to see that happen. I was actually jealous, too. You know, I wanted to be there like... Mm-hmm amming it up and talking and, and, and seeing if we, you know, working it out or, or drawing rocks with them. But, man, what a deal. I mean, I thought it was really, at the end of the day, I felt like most people wanted to work it out, but then Dave was drawing a line in the sand, and I think Brett had the, the wavos to go forward with it, too. And, and they said, let's draw rocks. And, man, they all stuck their hand in there and did it. I thought it was, for me, just going out that way, I'd rather go out that way than backstabbed by Zeke. <laughs> so what did you see on TV that surprised you the most when you saw it? You know, I'd say Zeke and Dave's relationship surprised me a little bit. I thought that was a brilliant move by uh, Dave to kind of pull Zeke in by showing him his idol and uh, saying we're cut from the same cloth. I thought that was uh, that was really shocking to me. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, that, that's probably the, that's probably the most shocking thing to me is that it was, I didn't, I didn't realize that was going on, uh, at all. Even though he had run up to you and said he really, really trusted you in the very beginning? <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave and I had, uh, kind of a, I don't know, an unspoken agreement that we understood that each person was going to go after the other, um, at some point in time, if just a matter of time, but I just felt like, uh, I had the numbers at that vote, and Dave wasn't going to go against me. Uh, but then I saw my name come up, and I was like, uh-oh, I'm history. How has your view of Survivor changed after this experience? You know, it's going to be hard to answer that probably until I watch a season I'm not part of, you know? Because right now I'm too invested, and I, I know too much about the whole thing. and uh, So it's going to be interesting to watch the next season as back to a real, true, just fan watching it and not somebody mm-hmm. that was a contestant on it. But it's certainly given me even more uh, respect for people who played and won this game. Uh, it is a very, very difficult game, and as much as you think you have it all figured out, you, you don't. How about your view of yourself? How did that change after this experience? You know, uh, it it changed for me a little bit because I I felt I felt weird. I felt like you know, kind of like maybe I'd failed my fans or my my family, my friends, my my people in Oklahoma a little bit. But then I'm watching it back and I'm like, you know, maybe I was a little naive or maybe I'm just playing this hindsight 2020 game. And at the end of the day, you know, hey, I took my shot. 
I did pretty good. I, I, there's a lot of things I'd have done differently, but you can't go back in time. So I feel pretty comfortable with it. But looking at myself overall, you know, you just learn to appreciate what you got more than anything because you're out there kind of stripped down to the uh, bare bone. What's it been like watching with family and friends? Uh, that's been just tremendous. I mean, uh, Oklahoma is a fairly small community, even though it's a state. And I had a little bit of notoriety from playing at OU, um, and it's been great. I mean, people have just been positive all across the board. My family and friends have just gone nuts, and they've lived in, and they've lived all the highs with me, and then they experienced the lows last week, and they were all disappointed and and shocked and so it's been really a, a fun thing to enjoy watching it with them what's next for you you know what what's next for me is to continue fighting for the little guy over here at my law firm but then i'll, I'll be back on survivor i i'll keep i will consider it like failure of a lifetime if i don't get back on that show i would i would play tomorrow oh um, you got the bug bad I'm very hooked, very hooked. I've actually, I mean, I, there's not a night goes by since I've been out of the show that I don't think I've had a dream or had a thought or woke up in the middle of the night about Survivor. Um, so I'm probably going to drive my wife nuts, uh, but I will hopefully be back on that show someday. Was there anything in particular you're having trouble letting go of? You know, I, I think I'm just competitive enough that I feel like I'm going to win every t- everything, and I just can't let go of, you know, I felt like... I felt like I was almost a little naive not to see uh, Dave coming. This that when I got blindsided, I, maybe I was a little naive to trust Zeke as much as I did, and it was like you know I was just tuning up to start really taking control of the game and to be blindsided like that. I just felt uh, I don't know, I felt stupid, uh, and I don't I'm not used to feeling that way. It's it's got to be hard for you too because everybody was talking about you before it started. They saw you just as a physical threat, and that's always going to be the case. Yeah, yeah, it's, it it was difficult. I just I felt confident of, and, and I almost had a. It was almost a moment where my social skills, which I think I have pretty good social skills, I felt like either that I had too many social skills and they felt that was a threat, or maybe I didn't have enough. Um, just talking to everybody, I think I did a pretty good job of connecting with people, but that's also a way to put a target on you is, hey, look, that guy's going to beat us in the end, so let's take him out. All right. Well, we sure enjoyed watching you, and thanks for sharing with us today. Good luck to you. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.